Okay, we're going to continue with our study of radical expressions here. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at doing some operations with radical expressions, and specifically, we're going to be doing uh, addition and subtraction, and we're only going to be doing that on radicals that are square roots. Uh, you may see some higher degree radicals later, but this video will focus on square roots. Uh, this video also uh, takes into account the assumption that you can take a radical such as the square root of 22 and know if it's simplified and if not, move forward to simplifying it. So you should have watched the previous video on how to simplify a radical. Okay, so let's get to work here. Um, it's just two steps. It builds on the idea of simplifying individual radical terms. Um, and what we do here is we will simplify your radical terms and then combine like terms. Okay? Uh, it's not always this, the case that you will have to simplify your radicals because sometimes you will get expressions where the radicals are already simplified. So let's take a look at this example where it says 5 root 22 minus 7 root 22 and uh, we'll notice here if we're going to try to simplify our radicals we see the square root of 22 uh, it only factors into 2 and 11 which we don't have a repetitive factor therefore it can't be simplified so now I'll just look to combine these like terms uh, we have 5 root 22 minus 7 root 22 give us negative 2 root 22. Again, similar there, once you get it down to like terms, it's almost a problem like 5x minus 7x is negative 2x, but instead of having a variable, it has a radical. So the addition and subtraction principles are still the same there. So, moving right along to the next problem, we see here where we're asked to uh, simplify this. Okay, we're going to try to simplify these radicals and then combine like terms. If you notice right from the get-go, it does not look like we have like terms. We have root 18 and root 32. So, I'm just going to take root 18 into the margin here. And I'm going to simplify this using the perfect square method that I talked about in the previous video. Uh, it's very much uh, a quicker method and if you can employ it here as it's embedded in a longer process you'll really be advantaged. So I ask myself what's the largest square that goes into 18 and I see that it's 9. So I'll rewrite 18 as 9 times 2 then I'll square root the 9 and get 3 root 2. Similarly I will do that for root 32 and ask what's the largest perfect square that goes into 32 if you were to say 4, you would not exactly be right, although 4 is a perfect square. It's not the largest square that goes into 32. Because in this case, we would much rather break this into 16 times 2. And we'll look at that square root. So we'll square root the 16, get 4. You can't square root the 2 and simplify it any further. So we just kind of hold on to that by rooting, writing root 2. Now I'm going to substitute these values back into the original expression. So I'm going to get 6 times 3 root 2. I'll try and do that in color. Minus 7 times 4 root 2. Okay. And when performing these multiplications, I can only uh, multiply factors that are on the uh, outside together. I can multiply the 6 times the 3, but I can't multiply the 3 times the 2. Similarly, I can multiply the 7 times the 4, but I can't multiply the 4 times the 2. There's kind of a quick rule we use here when we're addressing multiplication. It's called in within and out with out, which means you can only multiply things that are both inside the radical or things that are both outside the radical. So here we're looking at things that are both outside the radical. So I will continue there and get 18 root 2 minus 28 root 2. 
moving back to this idea of combining like terms, I'll do 18 minus 28, I believe is negative 10, and then bring down my root 2 for an answer of negative 10 root 2. Uh, just briefly, you could check that on your calculator also by um, just looking at the original problem and saying 6 second square root of 18 minus 7 second square root of 32 you'll get a decimal for that obviously and then just comparing that to negative 10 second square root of 2 and we see that they are in fact um, the same the same number the only other thing you have to make sure is that your radical here cannot be simplified any further and we see that root 2 can't be simplified any further so this answer seems pretty legit okay continuing on for uh, one last example here where again we're gonna look for when we're doing this adding and subtracting of radicals we're gonna try and simplify our radicals then combine like terms uh, I'm reiterating that because when we move to multiplication and division uh, the steps are mildly different. Um, so let's take a look see here. I'm going to look at 15 root 3 and realize I can't simplify the root 3. Then I'll look at 9 root 5 and realize I can't simplify the root 5. But when I look at 6 root 27, I'll take the root 27 in the margin to simplify it. Again, that magic question, what's the largest perfect square that goes into 27? In this case, it'll be 9, so I factor 27 into 9 and 3. Performing the square root, I get 3 root 3. And then moving on to the next term, which is the square root of 45. Well, it has factors. And the factors I'm interested in there, again, will be 9 but its partner this time will be 5. So the square root of the product of 9 and 5 can be simplified by taking the square root of 9 and bringing down the square root of 5. So again, I'm going to replug these values sort of back into their appropriate places in the original expression. Nothing to do such as that in the first two terms. But then when I get to the third term, it's going to be 6 times root 27, which I said was 3 root 3. So I'll swap that in. And then I'm going to subtract root 45, which I said was 3 root 5. And then I'll do a little step 1a here, which is the continue to simplify. And... Uh, you know, um, rewrite this line one more time. So I'm going to get 15 root 3 minus 9 root 5 plus 18 root 3 minus 3 root 5. And then just realizing I have like terms of root 3s, 15 and 18 is 33 root 3. And further noting that I have like terms of root 5's I have a, a debt of 9 root 5's and then another debt of 3 root 5's which gives me a debt of 12 root 5's so some cool colors going here and my final answer is 33 root 3 minus 12 root 5 interesting to see here that you get two terms um, so when we simplify these uh, radical expressions using addition and subtraction, um, we're limited by the notion of like terms, so you don't always get it down to one term. So uh, I hope this was a help. Um, it takes a little practice. Uh, this uh, set of steps here, simplify your radicals and combine like terms, uh, it's not a hard and fast law for doing these problems that way. Uh, it is uh, the high road, if you will, if you employ that mindset when approaching these, when you're asked to add and subtract, um, you'll have a lot of success. So enjoy.